I mean, God is accelerating raising the dead. I was over there in Germany, and I told the church that, and they raised a guy who had been dead for four days in the morgue. Now they're in a big old conference center. They, they were in a little bitty kind of a uh, building, and then God raised this guy from the dead, and now people are flocking in there. And it says many believe when they saw the miracles he did. Listen, we need miracles. Listen, I'm telling you, we need miracles. One time I was flying from uh, Moscow down to Vienna, Austria, and Billy Graham was on the plane. And uh, I'm standing in the aisle of the airplane with Billy Graham, and here's what I told him. I said, Dr. Graham, God has shown me that signs and wonders or miracles are going to be used in a mighty way to win the end time harvest. He said, son, I believe every word of that. That's what he said. Then he put his hand right here on my shoulder. He said, let me tell you something about harvest time. I was reared on a farm, and one thing I know about harvest time, it's short. And we've got to get busy about the main thing. The main thing is winning souls. God would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of Christ. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And boy, what we've got to do now is uh, we've got to get the message outside the four walls of the church. It says that Jesus went about. Wow, isn't that genius? He went about. Now listen, this morning I poured boiling water in my hand, but I didn't get blistered. You know why? Stop on cup. It doesn't take much insulation to stop a process. Four walls will do just fine. If we keep the gospel inside four walls, it doesn't affect the people that need to hear it. How can they get saved if then uh, we got to preach the gospel, hadn't we? Wasn't that wonderful? Like I love the guitar player. When he walked by, I gave him a verse out of the Bible. Psalms 144, verse 1. He teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. When he picks up that guitar, that's not just a guitar, that's a weapon. Isn't that something? He teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Psalms 144, verse 1. Now, listen, prophets are supposed to know the timing. Uh, now, here, if, if, I, if I could just, if I, if I had a big old uh, board up here, I'd draw you something. Now, watch my hands and see, see if you can see what I'm doing. Right, it goes just like that. goes down and has a question. Or, it's a question mark. That's where the church is right now. We're going, who, where are we? Who are we? What are we going to do? And God's about to turn our question mark into an exclamation point. Aren't you ready? God wants us to be ready. I'm telling you, he has equipped us with everything we need. Colossians, Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 says, All that God is, is in Christ. The Bible said, It pleased the Father that the fullness of deity would dwell in Jesus Christ permanently. So Colossians 2, 9 says, All that God is is in Christ. You go, I believe that. Well, do you believe Colossians 2, 10? All that Christ is is in you. We got to get rid of this stinking thinking. Did you know the devil and God both are asking you the same question? How could holy God and hateful devil be synchronized in asking you the same question? Here's the question. You ready? Who do you think you are? Hell's going, who do you think you are? Heaven's going, who do you think you are? As a person thinks, that's how they'll be. Remember in the book of Numbers when God said, go take the land. It flows with milk and honey. And they did like a lot of church members. They got uh, uh, committed together to see if God knew what he's talking about. Said, let's send, send in some spies. Remember the story? Long story short, when they got there, oh, man, the fruit was just like God said. It was overflowing. It was massive. And it says that it was flowing with milk and honey. Remember, a stalk of grapes was so big, the soldiers had to put it on a spear to carry it out. Big fruit. But then here's the problem. It says, yeah, it was just like this, flowing with milk and honey. But we saw giants in the land. And when we analyzed our sip against the giants, we perceived our sip as grasshoppers. Here's what your Bible said. Because they perceived themselves as grasshoppers, the enemy had the privilege of seeing them as grasshoppers. Now, we've got to answer the question, who are we? We're, we're, well, we're giants. Yeah, here we go. Joshua 1 9. Joshua 9 1 9 says, Be bold, be brave, be very courageous, go do what you're called to do because you're not going by yourself. The book of Jeremiah says, The Almighty God is coming. He's coming with you wherever you go. I mean, that's all you need, isn't it? Yeah. So we're, we're going to talk about, uh, I asked three questions all over the whole earth. If not now, when? If not here, where? If not you, who? Now, if not now, when? See, a lot of people are paralyzed by the past. Oh, if I'd lived in Wigglesworth Day, if I'd lived in A.A. A. Allen's Day, if I'd lived in William Brandon's Day. You didn't. You're living now. And see, they're paralyzed by the past. Some are, are paralyzed by the future. Somewhere out there, the whole earth is going to be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. Well, uh, that's true. It's going to be there. But some are fantasizing about the future. But I love the little word now, N-O-W. 
It blockades the path through the past, barricades the path through the future, and traps us in the present. You and I need to move with God when? Now. now. That's what it says, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. If the church needs anything, we need substance and evidence. We can't keep talking about a God we can't prove. He wants to show up and show off. Paul said, I determined not to know anything among you except Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and much in trembling. He said, my speech, my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in a demonstration of God's power. It was never the plan of God to establish the kingdom of God with mere verbiage. 1 Corinthians 4.20 said, the kingdom of God doesn't consist with just mere words, but God demonstrated deeds. So we need that anointing upon us, don't you think? Not one single miracle is recorded in your New Testament that Jesus did until he was filled with Holy Ghost. What? Not one single miracle recorded in the New Testament that Jesus did and he was filled until he was filled with Holy Ghost. Nearest thing to it, teaching astonishing people with what he knew. Acts 10, 38 says God did something. He anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? Holy Ghost and with power. See, you can't, you can't have power without the Holy Ghost. Jesus, Jesus said, you need the anointing. You know why? We're supposed to be doing the same things he did, only bigger. These works that I do and greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. Wow. Now, he means that. These are not just words. These are challenges. Now, I want you to start realizing who you are. The question was, who do you think you are? 2 Corinthians 5.20. 2 Corinthians 5.20 is, here's that English word again, N-O-W. Now are we ambassadors for Christ. That's what it says now. Are we ambassadors? So it would behoove us to find out what in the heck is an ambassador. If that's what we are. Now, here's what it said. When he, when he wrote ambassador, it's, it means a senior representative sent out with authority. A senior representative sent out with authority. I don't know about you, but my mind goes, okay, how much authority do I have? I have the same amount as the one that sent me. How much, how much does he have? All power, all authority is given to me in heaven and in earth. We try to find out that there's no need to wait. There's no delay. I'm telling you, now is the day. So we're talking about, if not now, when? The Bible said, today, if you hear his voice. 2 Corinthians what, 6, 2 says, now is acceptable time. Now is the time of an assured welcome. Now is the time he'll hear you and help you. 2 Corinthians 6, 2. Now, when I, when I read the Bible, I read it out of the Amplified Classic. I'd suggest you do the same thing. Don't get the AMP. The, get the AMPC. They're hard to find, but they're worth it. The AMPC, the, the AMPC is really good. See, I'll give it to you like Psalms 92.10, King James. You ready? My horn has been exalted like the horn of a unicorn. Heck, how many of them you seen? Yeah, yeah. But Psalms 92.10 in the Amplified, it said, My stately grace. Oh, I like that, don't you? Has been exalted. Banded like that of a wild ox. Now, I'm from Texas. I can work with a wild ox. I used to ride bulls in the rodeo. I got knocked out and heard Conway Twitty singing. <laughs> Woo! Getting knocked out was bad enough, but hearing Conway Twitty sing. Mm. Have, have you ever ridden a bull? Oh, it's awful. You, you know? You get on there and the bull's snorting and snots going everywhere. And there's some idiot on the gate with a big old chitter rocker. And he goes, you ready? You go, yeah, you ain't ready. <laughs> they throw the gate open, it explodes. That's the longest eight seconds you'll spend. You in and out. But anyway, anyway, I, I wouldn't let my boys do it. But anyway, here's what I want to talk to you about. I want you to understand we have already won. All we've got to do is go pick up the spoils. God likes to do new things. And he, isn't it uh, Amos 3.7? Amos 3.7 says, Surely, absolutely, God will not do a single thing without first revealing what he's going to do to his servants, the prophets. Isaiah 48, verse 6 and 7 says, God said, I do a new thing. It's new now and not prior to now. So nobody would be blase going, I already know that. Isaiah 48, verse 6 and 7. God likes new things. If you want to see one of the newest new things in the Bible, 2 Chronicles 20. Second Chronicles 20, that's where Jehoshaphat and the people of God were under great attack. It looks like it's a, 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 a situation that could not be solved or settled in any way. And here's what they do. Jehoshaphat calls an assembly. And he gets everybody praying, fasting, seeking God. The women, the soldiers, even those that suck the breast because what they're facing uh, touches every segment of society. And I think that Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles 20 does something fantastic. 
in the midst of a people that are very confused, he stands up and begins to rehearse how good God has been in the past. Wow. Oh, Lord God. Oh, I'm screaming. Oh, Lord God. Are you not the God that drove out our enemy? So he stands in front of a bunch of confused people facing an insurmountable situation and begin to rehearse how good God had been in the past. And then here it gets to that 2 Chronicles 20.12. 2 Chronicles 20.12. It says, Oh Lord, we don't know what to do against this great multitude that's come up against us, but our eyes are upon you. And as they were praying and fasting, seeking God, the Spirit of the Lord fell upon a prophet. And the prophet gets up and prophesies a new thing. He said, listen to me, Jehoshaphat, and all of you Judea, uh, in Judea. Here, and he, See, that's what people got to learn to listen to the prophets. Because not God, God's not going to do a single thing without first revealing what he's going to do to his servants, the prophets. Amos 3, 7. I like Amos 3, 8 too. A lion has roared in the streets. Who can but prophesy? It's time for us to soar so we can come back and roar, don't you think? Yeah. 